Do you know, I'm sure it's getting colder in here. Now then, where were we? Oh yes, chapter seven, the old folks jailbreak. The lady in the nurse's uniform was very nice, but seemed a little uneasy as she let the three friends through the door. As nice as it is to have visitors, we don't want you too much excitement for our residents. Please try to behave yourselves. She's talking about you, Doris snapped at Malcolm, who wasn't paying attention at all. Yes, yes, of course, may we go now. Malcolm was obviously well known at the Sea View Rest Home for Retired Witches. Isn't it a bit obvious having a sign that says they're outside, inquired Lizzie. Ah, but no one who isn't magical can see it, explained the nurse, showing them into a large lounge. All around the huge room, that seemed bigger on the inside than the entire building did on the outside, were chairs, fruit machines, pinball machines, slot machines, bingo, snooker tables, and other tables covered in tea and cakes and biscuits, ping pong tables, knitting wool baskets, crochet and patchwork tables. In fact, almost every kind of activity that you'd find in a holiday camp. And Lizzie could see a swimming pool outside in the garden that seemed to go on forever. Suddenly, a shriek of excitement went up and 30 or so old ladies dropped at what they were doing and suddenly rushed to surround the friends. Malcolm was of a particular interest to the old ladies. He was quite the charming gentleman when surrounded by adoring witches who all wanted a cuddle from him. A group of four ladies came over to see Doris and Lizzie and each gave Doris a hug. We weren't expecting you so soon. Surely you've not reached your 300th birthday yet. They all wanted to know why Doris had come to visit them. And as Doris explained and introduced her young friend, suddenly a sudden hush fell over the room. Ladies, I'd like you to meet Lizzie Queen. Immediately, the gaggle of women fell silent and turning to see Lizzie, they all curtsied at the same time. Not quite, ladies, we've got a bit of a problem and we need quite a lot of help. As the day went on, Lizzie was introduced to every single one of the retired witches at the Seaview Rest Home. Each one had known Lizzie's gran from the old days and said what a kind and happy queen she was. And each witch sat down and talked to Lizzie about their favourite spells and, of course, their favourite cakes and biscuits. It seemed that all witches loved tea and cakes and biscuits, and their favourites were either custard creams or jammy dodgers. In fact, quite often there would be arguments between the old ladies about what biscuit was the best, and usually resulted in the throwing of balls of knitting wool at each other. Once, after a particularly vigorous exchange of opinions, they managed to fill the entire room with strings of multicoloured wool and it had taken an entire week to rescue everyone. The very thought of old ladies resorted to chucking things at each other sounded hilarious to Lizzie, and to have trapped themselves as a result of an argument over biscuits seemed even funnier. Apparently, somebody once had a nerve to suggest introducing ginger biscuits into the group. In that particular witch spent the next month as a canary in a cage when somebody let slip a well-rehearsed spell from the old days. Thankfully, it was now a rule of the rest home that only custard creams and jammy dodgers were allowed on the premises. Whilst the nurses were taking a break, Malcolm used his charm to gather the attention of the assembled witches. As they all sat within the ring of chairs, it was decided that the best plan of action was to take the battle to Brighton. A few old dears who didn't look as though they could walk the length of the room were the most eager. We haven't been out on a trip since the last year a couple of us sneaked away from the out into Hastings and ended up in Monte Carlo. That was a laugh, and Maureen won three million euros playing roulette. There were plenty of biscuits that Christmas, I can tell you. It was apparent that every one of them was up to the challenge, and with over 30 witches, how could they fail? Malcolm realised he would really have to pull out all the stops to change the removal lorry into something big enough to transport over 30 aged ladies back to Brighton. At least he'd have another day to think about it, as tomorrow was Friday, 
and in order to stop Mrs. Black, they would have to occupy the place known as the Witch's Stone before daylight on Saturday. All through the day, Lizzie chatted to the witches, and they showed Lizzie how to knit without using her hands, or knitting needles. How to make a tea trolley come on command, just like a dog, and how to pour the tea and serve cakes and biscuits. Not just like a dog, even a very talented and obedient one. That was one trick that Lizzie liked above all others, because good witch magic seemed to do everything, and all you had to do was to be happy. It was very easy to make other people see things from your point of view if you smiled at them. <laughs>